In any project, various activities may be carried out at different times over the duration of the project. It can be at different times of the year, month, week, and even down to different times of the day. If you are familiar with typical planning and scheduling techniques, you will know that this can be configured through the use of calendars. In P6, calendars are assigned to individual activities rather than a whole project. To create a calendar, go to Enterprise, Calendars. This should open up the calendars window. Along the top, you will see three different choices of view. Global, which shows the calendars available to use on any of your P6 projects. Resources, which shows calendars that you can apply to resources. And Project, which shows the calendars available to this particular project only. We will cover resource calendars in a separate session. Let's select Project and create a new calendar by clicking on the Add button. Here, P6 will ask you to select an existing calendar you can copy from and base your new calendar on. The default calendar P6 applies when you make a new activity is called the Corporate Standard Full Time. Let's select this calendar and click on the Select button. Give your calendar a name. Press the Enter key and you can start configuring it by clicking the Modify button. Now you'll see your specific calendars configuration window. Along the top you have the choice of seeing a simple total number of work hours per day or a detailed breakdown of work hours in a day down to each half hour. As the legend below the calendar mump shows, a light grey shading indicates a standard working time a blue shading indicates a non-work day and a white shading indicates a customised working time. For example, a standard work day based on the standard 5 day work week calendar has work hours from 8am to 5pm with a 1 hour break from 12pm to 1pm. You can see this in a detailed work hours breakdown. If you select a day and click the non-work button, you will see the selected day change to a blue shade with all hours in the day blocked out. If you select another day and click the work button, the default working hour set will be an 8 hour working day from 8am to 4pm. You can also select particular time blocks in the detailed work hours breakdown to set as working or non-working periods. Customising working hours makes the colour of the selected day change to white, indicating an exception. If you would like to undo any customizations and revert back to the standard configuration, simply select the day and click the standard button. Clicking the work week button will allow you to configure standard working hours for each day of the week which P6 will then refer to when you click the standard button for this calendar. Clicking on the time periods button will allow you to configure how many hours are in a day, week, month and year. To navigate the calendar you can click the left and right buttons to go to the next or previous month. You can also click on the month in the centre to switch to a view of the year, from which you can also go to the next or previous year. Finally, at the bottom of the window, you can select an existing global calendar from which you would like to import any holidays or exceptions. Tips and tricks. To select multiple days in a month, you can select a date, hold the shift button on your keyboard and select another date. This will select all the days between the two dates. You can also hold the control button and select multiple individual dates. If you click on a day of the week, say Wednesday, all the Wednesdays of the month will be selected. The shift and control buttons also apply to this feature, as you can see.
When you are happy with how you've configured your calendar, click OK and close the calendars window. You can assign a calendar to an activity through the details window from the general tab and selecting your desired calendar. You can also do this if you have the calendars column available in the table window. This serves the same purpose. Once you have assigned a calendar to an activity, the start and finish dates will automatically adjust according to its duration and the calendar's configuration. You may need to schedule the project for this to take effect. We will consider this in a later session. This wraps up the basics of activity calendars. We hope this gives you a good understanding of how to set up and apply calendars to activities. It's worthwhile to spend some time familiarising yourself with configuring calendars in P6.